got some liquid nitrogen. If we move the liquid nitrogen, it leaves a little dark patch. So it's seeing the infrared. You're all familiar with infrared. You watch an audience react to this and you can absolutely convince them that, okay, there's a, such a thing as this invisible form of light called infrared. Now here's a little trick. There's a gentleman here with some glasses on and we can see that your glasses transmit visible light but they don't transmit this wavelength of infrared. Wonderful little demonstration. When I did this at a school a couple of weeks ago, a young 14-year-old girl approached me right at the end after all the other girls had gone, all girls school, to ask me if her glass eye would look dark. She'd lost her eye as a three-year-old to a sarcoma. So we had a big long conversation about that. Kids are fascinated by this. So here's glass, we can see straight through it. But if you hold it in front of a kettle, the kettle is not glowing through that glass. So this is not transparent to this wavelength of light. Gets people thinking about light in a whole new way, in a way they need to understand because they don't understand climate change. So uh, they love this. So there's my glass. Here's some hot water going in. And the glass itself is now starting to warm up. So it's starting to glow. Looks beautiful. The colours are all obviously artificial. But if we pour that in there, and now look at the glass, the glass itself is glowing. So the glass is now the thing that's emitting the infrared light. This stuff, we need to show politicians this. Uh, the Australians in the room know a guy called Glenn Ridges. He used to be the host of Sale of the Century. Uh, he's a very wise chap. He interviewed me about something else on the radio and uh, about this weight loss business. And when he asked me, when people exhale carbon dioxide, does that contribute to climate change? He didn't know the answer. And when I explained to him the modern carbon cycle versus burning fossil fuels, he said to me, and I'll put this on my website, I've got the audio. He said to me, Ruben, you're the first person that's ever made sense of this to me. So if we've got people like Glenn Ridges, not a skeptic at all, uh, if he doesn't get it, what chance do you reckon your politicians have of understanding what we're trying to say to them is you've got to stop pumping out this invisible gas which you can't see because it's absorbing an invisible form of light which you also can't see. So no wonder we've got this problem. I'll do one more little thing. This is my liquid nitrogen and uh, the floor's pretty warm down here but if I pour some onto the floor, the floor goes very black. Uh, it's minus 196. If I put my foot in there, I'm pretty warm. This is really just such simple stuff. Every school needs to have this, right? You can plug, there's a new version for the iPhone 6. Um, every school kids should see liquid nitrogen. Um, here's how I've set things up. Uh, it's just talking this way. It's a bit tricky to get these gizmos to communicate. So I'm using some software called Reflector. Um, if you want to try that, please don't give me the credit for this idea. I did not invent any of this technology, and it's there for anyone. You can buy that from the Apple Store. Um, so please get into it. Um, and let's get into today. I have a little bit of housekeeping to do before we have our first two speakers. So welcome back, um, and hope you've had a restful evening. There's a little social media reminder to use the Twitter handle at Pivotal Summit and hashtag Pivotal. If you haven't yet put some notes into the um, Pivotal Principles comments, um, please do that by noon today, because that will hopefully become a paper that gets published. This spatial industry really needs a bit of a lift in the public uh, mind, because people don't know what it means yet, so that's why we're here. So please do make comments about that. Um, Later on, this morning's morning tea will be brought to you by Arnold Development Consultants and Digital Globe and NICTA. Speaking of NICTA, um, I might go back very briefly because there's still a few people filtering in. Um, so I might go back to my computer if that's all right. Um, and I'll just tell you a little thing that's kind of related to NICTA. This will hopefully um, get you feeling confident about the young generation of today and how they take this stuff in. Last year I met this fellow Michio Kaku, and that's Town Hall in Sydney. And when I explain this to kids, I tell them that, look, this gentleman here came and spoke to 2,000 people in Sydney on a Saturday night. There was a big football game on the same night. 
And yet all those people came and listened to him speak about physics, the universe, will we ever be able to travel in time? All these really big, deep questions, will we ever move anything with our minds? That kind of stuff. After I took that selfie, and by the way, the word selfie, the first time it ever appeared anywhere, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, was on Dr. Carl's ABC Science Online Forum. So I told Michio, look, I need a selfie and I've got a good excuse, I'm from the ABC. There we are. That audience there gave him a standing ovation after that selfie. I said, would you please thank Michio? And they all stood up and gave him this awesome uh, standing ovation. So when I tell school kids this, I tell them, you know, I met this awesome bloke. He um, works on string theory. The kids hear about the standing ovation. Then I show them this man. And I say to them, have you ever met this guy or seen this bloke? And no, they haven't seen him. I had never seen a photo of this gentleman either. But we've all seen that logo. This is Terry Percival, who invented Wi-Fi, along with four other CSIRO scientists. Now, every time I do this, the kids burst into applause. I've had kids give him a standing ovation when he wasn't in the room because they love their Wi-Fi. And I just remind them that, look, that made 500 million bucks for Australia. So you've got a gold mine in your head if, you've, if you're good at maths. It's fast Fourier transforms is what gave us Wi-Fi. And here's the really sad bit. I just got in a lift this morning with Mal Meninga. Lovely bloke. Um, they're staying at the Ridges. And next week it'll be all about the state of origin. Well, here's the 2012 European Patents Awards where Terry Percival got the European Patents Awards prize for developing Wi-Fi. And here in Australia, how many newspapers reported that? One. The Cowra Community News. So if you're worried about the fact that you're not getting the media attention you want for your industry, join the rest of us. It's very hard to get the media to, to pay attention to this. I'll show you one more selfie since there's surveyors in the room. This is uh, the gentleman who uh, you're interested in space and spatial. This is the gentleman who figured out that not only is space getting bigger, it's getting bigger at an accelerating pace. There's his Nobel Prize. It's Professor Brian Schmidt. Um, he donated $100,000 of his Nobel Prize money to uh, the Australian Academy of Science to uh, use it towards teaching primary school teachers how to teach science to primary school kids. So there's some good things happening out there, but we are all up against this, and kids love it. It's just that our media doesn't realise how much kids love it. So I'll t say one more name, and if you're not from this country, just watch the other people. Who remembers a guy called Julius Sumner Miller? And what was his catch cry? People love him to this day, and, uh, and yet our current TV producers, I'm always up against them trying to say kids will eat this stuff up, just put it on the telly.